make it. Yes, yes, yes. But, everybody say but. But. I'll keep pressing on. I'll keep pressing on. Lord, I don't know if I can get through what I'm going through, but, but, but I'm not going to quit. Yeah, yeah. When you come to the understanding that the life that you now live in Christ is totally, completely, unequivocally different than the life you live outside of Christ or apart from Christ, until you get to the place where you really understand that, you won't understand the battles and the struggles that you're facing. Some people are crying because they didn't get a new house and a new car. Other people are crying because they're trying to do right. And it's difficult. Anybody ever cried because I was trying to do right and it seemed like it was so hard? Yes! Hey. All right. Two people. All right. The rest of y'all that got the secrets, y'all better share them with other people. There are so many times where you're frustrated not because I didn't get a promotion or I didn't get acknowledged or I didn't get... You're frustrated because you're trying your best to do what's right and it seems like everything is fighting against you. Trying to get you to do the wrong thing. In today's message, and I'm just in my introduction, we're going to really look at what it means to be a new creation in Christ. If we're ever going to grow to a level of spiritual maturity, we're going to have to look deep into what it means to be a new creation in Christ. And I believe that this is the missing ingredient. That your life is like a wonderful cake. And You've got everything looking nice, but when you taste it, something's missing. Anybody ever made something and you felt like, man, it looks real good, it came out real good, but then you tasted it. And something was missing. People are tasting your life. And they're walking away thinking, wait a minute. That's supposed to be a Christian, but something's missing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes you stick your own finger in it, like, let me taste my own cooking. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you realize that something is missing. Nudge your neighbor and say, something's missing. Something's missing. Something is missing. Like Keith, Keith Sweat used to say, something, something just ain't right. Just ain't right. <laughs> Y'all too safe for that. Amen. But something is missing in my walk. Something is missing in my love. Something is missing in the way that I think, in the way that I feel, in the way that I'm approaching things. Something. Something. Yes, yes. Just right. Right. Mm. And so the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 through 19 expresses to us an idea that on the surface seems simple, but when you pull back the layers, it's difficult. He says in verse 17, therefore, now the word therefore is a word that connects the last statement to the present statement. And so when I say, therefore, I'm saying this based upon something that was previously stated. Verse 16 says, therefore, from now on, regard no one according to the flesh. <laughs> he said that even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet we know him... <coughs> Thus, no longer. In other words, he's ascended. He's no longer in his physical body. We don't know him after the flesh anymore. Therefore, if any man is in Christ, 
he's a new creation. Because if you're in Christ, yes, yes, he's no. Oh, somebody caught it. Mm -hmm. He's right. no longer in the flesh. Right. So if you're in him, okay. you no longer operate in the flesh. Mm -hmm. And so to really be new, you've got to transcend operating in this flesh. Mm. The flesh is always going to create issues and problems. You say, Pastor, what is the flesh? <laughs> the flesh is me apart from God. All right. Me apart from the Spirit of God guiding me, governing me, showing me how to walk and talk all over again. Wow. To be new, you have to acknowledge that you were old. That's good. To have a new life, you've got to say there was an old life. Jesus said in John chapter 3, verse 6 and 7, right in your notes, John chapter 6 and 7, he said, what is born of the flesh is of the flesh. And what is born of the spirit is of the spirit. Verse 7, marvel not that say that you must be born again. Yes. When you were born into this world, you were a creation of your mother and father. Mm -hmm. No, God created me. God created man in the beginning. Yes. But then man began to beget man. God beget the first man, but then man beget, beget man. This is why you've got to identify what you are receiving from those who came before you. Because whoever created you, you're going to walk in their image. Y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. Sometimes you do stuff that your parents did and don't even know that you're doing. Sometimes you make faces and make statements and do stuff that your parents did and you don't even know that you're doing it. You don't even know that you are walking in their image. You don't even know that you're acting like them because you don't understand that it is the creation that you are apart from God that is what you see every day. And if any man is in Christ, he becomes a new creation. Because in Christ, we begin to not imitate our parents and our older brothers and sisters and aunts and uncles. We begin to imitate him. This word creation. It literally means to found, build, or establish something. And so when he says new creation, he's saying that your life has been founded and built and established on something new. What is that new? Christ. How is it done? Through the Spirit of God. And so if you're still functioning based upon the foundation of your fleshly desires and ideas and wants and needs, then you haven't shifted into the newness that you're supposed to have. Now watch this. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. <laughs> Turn around and tell your neighbor, you have become and you are still becoming. You have become and you are still becoming. Break that down. That's good. Work on that. You have become and you're still becoming. My God. When you put your trust and your hope and your faith in the, res in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ, positionally, you shift to new. But you are progressively becoming like Jesus. That's good. And this progression is a day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year progression. Even though you are saved, you still are being saved. Okay, break that down. I'm saved and I'm on my way to heaven. But I'm still being saved from the stuff that I used to do. My God. What do you mean being saved? 
Every time you shift out of the things that you used to do, God is saving you from the headache and the hell that you were going to go through because of the things you used to do. That's good. People who carry a whole lot of drama in their life is because they are still operating in the things that are on their way to hell. And that's why you have all this hell in your life, because you're still doing things that the only place they can end up is in hell. And so God is not sending you to hell, but you're dealing with hell on the earth because your actions are functioning in a way that would send you there, even though God has saved you from there. My God. Make it plain. Make it plain. Your destination is no longer hell, but the effect on your life feels like hell. Whenever you have a whole lot of drama in your life, it's because you're still functioning according to the old you. And sometimes it's mature people. You ever been around somebody who's been in the church for years and they still got this street? They still got this hood. They still got this uh, uh, sarcasm where they cut you with their words and when are you going to grow out of the old you into the new you? When are you going to transition? Your position is there, but now you've got to transition to what you're supposed to look like. A lot of people don't intentionally work on themselves in that area. They say, well, that's just the way I do things. Just because that's the way you do things, that doesn't mean that's the way it's supposed to be done. That's right. That's right. Well, I've always talked like that. Doesn't doesn't mean you're supposed to keep talking like that. If any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. This word passed away in the Greek means to vanish, to depart, or to leave. Watch this. In order to embrace the new you, you have to commit to follow Jesus. And as you commit to following Jesus, you're allowing the old you to pass away. As long as you want to have Jesus and the old you, you have not made a commitment to following him. That's why people ask me all the time, well, pastor, how do you know that somebody is saved or not? And I tell them, you know what, please don't ask me that. Because <laughs> that is the most difficult question in the whole world to answer. Because positionally, a person could be saved. But their practice could look unsaved. The way they behave say, wait a minute, aren't you saved? Well, yeah. Well, then relax and trust God. Why are you so angry all the time? Why are you always into some mess? Why, why are you always lying and being deceptive? And why are you... These things, listen, these things are a product of not being able to trust God. People who lie and deceive who call themselves saved, they do that because they think they have to take care of themselves. <laughs> but once you start trusting God, you'll tell the truth because he'll take care of the details. Well, I'll just tell the truth and shame the devil. Why don't you? Because vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I don't have to avenge myself. I have to take care of myself. For as much as lies within you, live peaceably with all men. If it depends on you, I'm going to live peaceably. If they don't want to live peaceably with me, then they don't have to. But from my side of this, but see, that's being founded on Christ. Watch this. I'm working through it. Verse 18. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Christ Jesus and given us the ministry of of reconciliation. Now listen. Until you begin to operate in your first ministry 
Well, my first ministry is a parent. No. There's a ministry that you got as soon as you got saved. As soon as you gave your life to Christ, he gave you a ministry. And that ministry is called reconciliation. And in that ministry, you are most like Jesus. Because you can't really follow Jesus unless you're trying to imitate him. There's too many people that say, I know God, but they base it upon how much they go to church and how well they function in church and how, uh, they, how they use their gifts and their talents and all that kind of stuff. But when you look at their life, they're not, used, they're not in the ministry of reconciliation. They're in the ministry of separation and division and chaos and confusion. That's not in Christ. I worry about people that can quote scriptures at me but can't reconcile with people. I worry about people who know the word and can finish the, 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 the verse before I'm done with it, but yet you won't forgive. I worry about people who the only way you can communicate is in an argument. You don't know how to relax and have a conversation. You don't know how to let somebody else speak their mind and you hear them out and then you speak what you have to say because you're constantly trying to one-up and win and defeat somebody when that wasn't Jesus' goal. His goal was to bring people together. Y'all quiet. Now all things are of God. That's a hard one too. Hey, you ever read the Bible and all of a sudden you read something like, yeah. mm -hmm. hold on, how am I going, hold on, all things are of God? Yes. How, how are all things of God? What he's saying is that your life is founded upon the mission, the practice, the purpose of God. The person you pick to marry is because of the purpose of God in your life. Not because of their eyes and their thighs. <laughs> <laughs> Not because of their chest and their biceps. You pick, you, you understand that this is the person because I sense there's a purpose that we have. Sometimes you don't even know it. You just are attracted to somebody in your and because you don't understand the purpose of God, you'll mess it up. Y'all do stuff you're not even supposed to be doing and mess it all up and it gets chaotic and it's so confusing. You're like, I don't even know what's going on here. It's because the foundation that you were building this on was wrong. Mm -hmm. Turn around and tell your neighbor foundation is everything. Foundation. Where, you, where this thing is established is one of the most important things. How do you establish your relationships? Because how you establish a relationship is how you're going to have to maintain it. If you establish a relationship off of, when I, was, when I was growing up, we used to play PlayStation all the time. So I had friends that my whole relationship with them was Madden. When I stopped playing Madden, we weren't friends no more. Because that was where our relationship was established. There are people, you ever, you know, you ever have a job and you on that job, these people were your friends. And they were your friends because that was the work. That, that's what the foundation of your friendship was. But if you founded your friendship on your faith, on what you believe, on the purpose of your life, then those are people that could be friends with you forever because you're always going to be operating in the purpose of God. Oh, y'all not getting this. Sometimes we found, even in the church, in the church, people have found their relationship on a specific ministry. Oh, we sing, so we friends. And so you sing together, and your friends, because you sing together. And like, oh, that's my friend. We'll go pick him up or pick her up. We'll go sing together. And when you stop singing, you 
find out you're not even bread. Wow. 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 I tell you, foundation is everything. Foundation is everything. Yeah. Now tell somebody, check the foundation. Check the foundation. I got I to gotta get moving. I got to get moving. Look. <laughs> Now, all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Christ Jesus. The ministry of reconciliation is this. The same way that God used Jesus to reconcile us, Jesus now commissioned us to reconcile others. Our whole goal in the way we live, in the careers that we choose, in the way we interact with people, should be to bring them back into right relationship with God. Now, I'm going to break down this, this part, reconciliation, and then I have a small little skit for you that I, I want you to, 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 to get a visual of. Listen. Let me pull up this note real quick because this is, this is important. I, I want to quote this right. So the Greek word for reconciliation is uh, from the Strong's. It's katalega, katalega. And this word means to restore favor by adjusting a difference. Hmm. Now, most of us think of reconciliation as two people making up. Go, we reconcile, we're friends again. <clears throat> in order for that to happen, <clears throat> somebody's going to have to make an adjustment for the difference. What's the difference? The difference is if you wronged me, then you owe me. In order for us to reconcile, I'm going to have to be willing to meet you either halfway, more than halfway, but I'm going to have to make up for the difference to allow you back in my life. When I did the research on reconciliation, <coughs> it was the same thing as when you take uh, two different denominations, money denominations, and reconcile them. And so the American dollar, as far as a euro, uh, the dollar is only worth 83 cents. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So when you transfer that over, you lose something. That's good. Come on, come on. Wow. This is this, this, this going to get you. Because you're not going to like this. Y'all ready for this? Because you're not going to like this. A lot of times to forgive people, you're going to have to lose something. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm sorry. I, it's the word. It's not, it's, it's not my fault. Oh, Nothing neighbor says it's not his fault. It's not his, it's not his fault. In order for us to get this right, I'm going to have to yield more than I probably want to. Yes. That's why the Bible says when you have aught with your brother, you got to get up and go to them. Because you gotta, you got to make an adjustment for the difference. You've got to bridge the gap in order for that relationship to be restored or in order. And so God, watch this, hmm. sent Jesus hmm. to make up the difference. Oh my, God. Oh my God, my God. Because we couldn't afford to pay for our own sins. We couldn't afford that's good, that's good. to get his favor back. Mm -hmm. Sin had separated us from God and we were so distant and we were so broken and there was nothing that we can do. We had not enough of anything yeah, to yeah, be able yeah, to make yeah. up. So he said, I'll make up the difference. Oh. Yeah. 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 because I wanted to illustrate this for you in a very practical way that all of us have probably experienced. 
And so as they're setting up, can we grab the table there? As we're setting up, I want you to see this. I, I really want you to visualize how Jesus had to make up the difference for us in order for us to have favor and to be right with God. Amen? So y'all got this reconciliation? I know rec this, this idea of reconciliation is so different because we're thinking reconciliation is just we made up. But there is a process that is happening behind us just making up. Somebody has got to make the adjustment. And a lot of times, the reason why people don't reconcile is because nobody will make. Y'all messing with me. Because yes. nobody will make the adjustment. In 2018, our goal is to be healthy spiritually and emotionally. Yes. Yes. Because a lot, a lot of times, your emotional self mm -hmm. is hindering your spiritual experience. Yeah. That's good. And That's your good. spiritual self can't go as high as you need to be because your emotional yeah. issues are holding you down. That's all right, all right. Yeah. And yeah. one of the most yeah. important ones is this that I'm talking about. This is the foundation for everything you're going to do mm -hmm. is that you have no right to walk around in a place of separation and division when the only ministry that it even says that every believer has is reconciliation. He says that all of us have this ministry. Well, that's, uh, Apostle has that ministry. No. <laughs> all of us have the ministry of reconciliation. We do have a steak special today. I don't eat red meat. Who's special in red meat? Sorry. I have to think about you. Wow. Yeah, some soup, maybe? Soup? Yeah. yeah. yeah absolutely. Oh, the chicken? Okay. Can we do that? Yeah, soup and chicken. Okay. Yeah, he's fine with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, obviously, since I'm forcing you around me, I guess I'll take a steak. steak. Do you have fries for that steak? You want fries for that steak? Yes, sir. Stand up. All right. And would that be all for you? Any dessert? Oh, no, no, no. We'll, we'll, we'll take it as Okay. All right, perfect. So that may take about 20 minutes, if that's okay. We really, we really absolutely put all our love into this field and really put our foot in it. You know what I mean? <laughs> 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 it's a restaurant, though. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, oh my god. Okay, uh, 20 minutes is fine. It's fine. Right. You sure? Alright, perfect. Do what you gotta do. Where did they find these people? Oh, seriously. He thought that was funny. I can't either. <laughs> Doesn't he understand food is serious? He don't make jokes about spitting. Now he's stumbling, now he's <laughs> Do you usually have soup and plates? Oh, uh, no. It's actually uh, branding. We're going to find something different as far as something original, something uh, new and creative. Forget I asked. Okay. Yes, Vincent. You didn't ask how I want my steak done. You did say you did. Well done. Yeah, well done. Okay. Um, let me go ahead. And... Wait. Let me. Let me. Let me taste the soup first. Okay. Absolutely. Speaking of old, speaking of old, I'll definitely speak to the chef. Make sure we get that. Uh, make sure that this one reaches the end. Okay. And well done. Correct. Yes. Any special sauce? No, just this one right here. Sir. Our chefs are still here. All right. Thanks. Don't, don't, don't give them no special directions. Hmm. What? Excuse what do you, me. What do you mean? Um, looks like 
you guys have in Look, I don't, I don't, I don't think you understand that I am a lead prosecuting attorney in my field. I'm, I make money. I got bank. This is what she does. Shouldn't be a problem. So maybe since you have all this money, uh, maybe you could check the ATM. Um, maybe we're having a malfunction here with the system. You're right. You're right. I'll be there. shouldn't let you go. And any right person in the right mind would not let you go. So what I'm going to do is give me what's in your wallet and I'll cover the rest for you. Whatever you have, even if it's one penny, just give that to me. I'll cover the rest.
So, did we get it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yo, that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> and so, as we worship God, we need to recognize that that's what Jesus did for us. <coughs> that's the way he, we treated him, but that's the way he treats us. Sometimes we're so demanding of God and we want this and we want that and we're angry because God didn't do this and God didn't do that and he didn't give me the life I wanted or the job I wanted or the house I wanted or the man or woman I wanted or all these different things and yet you don't have anything to pay for the service that he's already done for you. So today, the ministry of reconciliation is what I want you to walk out this door with. What he did for you, you need to do it for other people. I know it's going to be hard, but the power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead is in you. The spirit that raised him up will quicken you. Amen. 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 You would stand with me. I believe that everyone here is saved, but if there's someone that says, you know, I have strayed away from God, and I have not been walking with him, and I want to dedicate my life, I want to rededicate my life to the Lord, I want to make room for that to happen today. I don't want you to walk out of here feeling like you're distant or you're far away from God, but I want you to know that you're close to him, and that God loves you and he's covering you. And so when everybody's heads bowed and their eyes closed, if that's you, you say, you know, Pastor, I, I, yes, I definitely want to rededicate my life to the Lord. I want to walk like you talked about walking as a new creation. Then I want you to come down and let me and Elder pray for you in this moment, if there's anyone. saved we're all on our way to heaven amen well, we're going to end